Hello, hello. It's business partner 1.3. Oh, sorry, business partner B1 plus lesson 1.3. First impressions making, managing, and having first meetings. And I have this sentence here, first meetings, creating a good first impression. It has been said that you have only one chance to make a good first impression. And why is that? Because the next time you see the same person, you can make a good impression, but it's not going to be a good first impression. Ah. So, if you think that a first impression should be good, you should invest some thought on that moment, in that event of having a good first impression. I agree that a good first impression is positive, because although some relationships are going, are going to last, if you have a good first impression, you like contribute to have a good start and a good development and a very good second, third, fourth and so on uh, events together, meetings and is, this is positive, positive for business, positive for life, for relationships and I think these are important things. Well, what do we have here? We have the lesson. And lesson 1.3 in every, every unit is about communication skills. We are going to learn We are going to learn how to manage first in meetings, how to introduce ourselves, introduce others and do this, thinking about the, the situation, the, the environment you have, and like trying to take the best advantages of these occasions. We, we are still at unit one about organizations and uh, what we are going to see here. Learners are aware of different ways to manage first meetings and can use a range of uh, phrases for greetings, introductions and goodbyes. And this is really interesting. Did you know that there are different uh, approaches to first meetings? Yes, there are. And we are going to see two basic ones like two very different ones in videos and at this lesson here. The first discussion is this first exercise here. Let's take a look because uh, it's about how we behave when we meet someone for the first time. Mm. Look at the questions. When you meet someone for the first time, what do you usually do and say to be polite? Do you agree that uh, there are different first meetings, right? For example, a new colleague or a potential employer or a prospective client. And then we have these first meetings and you want to make a good impression and what do you do? Do you think you should limit to business, uh, business actions, talking only about businesses or do you think it's a little important to talk about uh, the person and who you are, describe yourself, or talk about something that has happened recently. Well, a, a friend of mine said that Americans learn uh, how to deal with Brazilians, and that they learn that for Brazilians, it's usually 
important to talk a little about yourself, your life, your objectives, and then go and talk about business. And this is funny, his example was like, an American guy is in a business meeting with a Brazilian, and he greets and says, mm, I had to take my daughter to the doctor. But they were strangers. I, would you say, if you're Brazilian, would you say that to a stranger? I'd just taken my daughter to the doctor. Well, maybe something more personal would be some small talk about soccer, football, or about the weather, or about uh, the delicious dinner you had at the restaurant near the company, maybe these, but you see, talking about your family, it's a strange, right? Don't you think? Will you agree that different cultures have different behaviors? Brazilians, Americans, Europeans, Eastern people, Chinese, Japanese, and different cultures, different behavior across cultures. There are many ways of being polite in first meetings. For example, some people shake hands, some people kiss, etc. How many different ways to be polite can you think of? Mm, some people, like Japanese people, they bow, right? In when they greet people and they avoid touching uh, how would you deal in the in these circumstances would you force the brazilian way or would you try to learn the other ways uh, attitudes and behaviors and costumes to try to adapt yourself <laughs> some people would say that if you are selling you would adapt if you're buying, you would think that the other one should adapt. But I think that everybody, buyers and sellers, should, be, should try to be respectful and polite. Don't you agree? Uh, but taking a, into account that there are verbal and non-verbal behavior that could be taken into account, like gift-giving, do you think that taking a small gift could be positive? Mm, what kind of clothes would you wear if you go to a first meeting in a business context? Um, do you think that the relationship, the meeting should be in a restaurant, at home, uh, at the company? These things can be thought of. And three, is it more polite to invest time to build relationships with a small talk first and then focus on the work or task? Or is it better to focus directly on the task and build the relationship later? Why? What would make this different? Uh, like, I heard that in China, it's impossible to do business until your relationship or a level of trust is established. In, in some other places, people are much more direct. They tend to work together and then they go to a restaurant to celebrate the deal, for example. Different people, different cultures, different attitudes. Well, the second exercise depends on watching the video. <clears throat> and we have some sequences. We have basically four, four videos here. And the first one is when Matt and Stephanie prepare to meet each other in London. What is this about? Well, they work for the same company and they are going to meet for the first time. They are releasing a kind of project and Stephanie is going to help them in London. She's from Germany 
and <clears throat> and then they they are going to interact for the first time. Stephanie is visiting Matt's office. Matt has two options to focus on developing a good relationship or to focus on work. Uh, look here at the question. Um, where do they work? What is their usual job? What is their project role? <clears throat> And then we are going to watch this video, this extract of the video, and we are going to try to find out these pieces of information. And well, we, we should be able to answer these three questions. But after we watch the video, we should mark which, qual which qualities Matt and Stephanie uses use to describe themselves and their own communication style, the way that they interact with others. Which words do the other speakers use to describe Stephanie? You do not need to use all the words. Well, there are four people that are going to talk. My suggestion for you is, if you have access to the video, the book's video, you should pause the video and watch to be able to answer this first exercise, part A, and to watch and try to answer part B. Look that there are some words that are not going to be used. Let's check the words here. Efficient, why don't you repeat if you think that you have some trouble with these words. Efficient, flexible, Work focused, rude, informal, friendly, polite, quiet, professional, organized, open, and effective. I believe that no words are problematic. I don't think that you have any trouble with them, but you should be able to identify which ones do Matt and Stephanie used to describe themselves and the other two guys what the words are what the words they use to describe Stephanie basically because they don't talk about Matt in the video and finally well, we are going to see the answers during the lesson and the live lesson and part C is, overall, do you think Matt and Stephanie will work well together? <laughs> this is a very good conversation for our live lesson. And we should give the answers for that. Well, you should give reasons. You should get prepared to give reasons for that. Because they are very different. Stephanie and Matt are different people. They have different approaches to work. And nobody's wrong here. They have the right to be the way they are. And, but maybe their different personalities can match together very well. Or they could have a clash. Very strong differences and have trouble to work with each other well <clears throat> the next exercise should be done with is in small groups but if it's a private lesson maybe you are alone as a student and we can work together easily don't worry the point is that we are going to watch a second and a third video on math and Stephanie. In small groups, discuss which is the best communication style, option A or B, for Matt to use in his first meeting with Stephanie. So this is about Matt's decision. Give reasons for your answers and as a class decide which video has or, or which video to watch first. We are talking about option A and option B, because in lessons 1.3, we are going to see 
usually two versions of the same problem. And it's really nice because they're not necessarily wrong, but they're different. Which one is going to, to match your personality? Which one do you agree most with? Which one do you think brings better results? These are the things that we should take or think about while watching these videos, these option A and B videos. So let's see. Um, option A, focus on the relationship first. Be polite by meeting Stephanie in an informal way and focusing on the relationship first before getting down to business. As I told you, I believe that these would be very important in China. Trying to establish a relationship, some trust first, and then going down to business. And there's option B. Focus on work first. Be polite by meeting Stephanie in a formal way and focusing the conversation quickly on two work topics. Look, in both situations, you should be polite. We should always be polite, right? But then, in option A, you should focus on the relationship. Let's be friends and then work together. Or let's be colleagues, right? And then in B, let's work first. Okay, we have these to do, let's do it. And then I observe how the other person works. And then in the end, we try to find like a circumstance to make friends with the person, if possible. <laughs> well, the points that you are going to tell me or the group is going to talk about the option that is more likely to be effective, the one you identify yourself with better. And uh, you, we are going to decide which one to watch first. And in B, watch the videos in the sequence the class has decided and answer the questions for each video. Well, again, if you have access to the video, to the videos before lesson, pause it, pause the video, this video, and watch option A. How does Matt introduce himself? Remember, in option A, he's polite and greets in an informal way. And then, how does he begin the visit? And why do you think he does this? And three, overall, how successful do you think the meeting is and why? Uh, here, you remember, he's going to focus on the relationship. Does Stephanie like that? Remember, she's German, right? Okay, não falei nada. <laughs> but do you think that she's going to like it? Do you think he's going to like it? And the team, do you think they are going to like it? Take this into account because. In your job, at your company, you might have these decisions to make. How to introduce a visitor, a client or a boss and show the company around and do some business. What do you focus first? Showing the place, working first, introducing others later. You tell me. I really want to learn more about your point of view on this topic. But then there's option B. And in option B, he is polite to Stephanie, he greets in a formal way, he focuses the conversation quickly on two work topics. Is there a reason for that? Well, how does Matt introduce himself? What two reasons does he give for discussing business immediately? Why? Because she's German and Germans don't make friends. That's not true. That's prejudice. Germans are really nice people and they make friends. So, hmm, 
stop prejudicing me. No, it was just a joke, right? Because lots of people around the world think that Germans are too serious. Okay, give three pints of beer and you see if they are really serious. Is this also prejudice? I don't know. But, but well, I know that they really try to work seriously. And this is very good, right? Yes. But then there are two reasons Matt give, gives for discussing business immediately. And you tell me if you agree with him and if he conducts the situation in a smooth, nice and polite way. And finally, the same question. How success, successful do you think the meeting is and why, right? Now, Matt talks about his point of view connected to how th things worked. And Stephanie also tells us how she felt about uh, how successful the meeting was. I really liked that because we start thinking that different people have different views on things and we have to respect how people are. Then we are going to discuss about that, discuss the questions and agree what you can learn from Matt's experiences. What did Matt do to be polite in each video? nice that he tries to be polite all the time but there are different approaches how is he different in each circumstance and what happened as a result what was like the the result of each situation let's try to agree on what we learned from the video. But in Lessons 1.3, there's always someone uh, commenting on the experience, on options A and B. There was a, a, a situation, a context that's expressed in part one. Parts two and three are options A and B. And this fourth video, tells us how or from the, or the view of an experienced person in communication and what he says about everything. We are going to watch the video. I hope that you have access to the video. This would be a wonderful time to pause the video and talk about uh, and think about these three questions. The first one, compare what is said with your answers in exercise four. Because you have already thought if you could watch the videos. Otherwise, in the live lesson, we are going to watch, discuss, and uh, compare to this fourth video. After that, we are going to, to watch, uh, uh, we are going to talk about the second question here. Note down the three main learning points which are described. Well, this expert is going to give three learning points. What we learn from these two options, A and B, from the conversation between Matt and Stephanie and their conclusions, their feelings, and what the demands of the job were. Let's try to find learning points here. And then decide how far you agree with these points. Remember, this is uh, based in England, how they would think. But maybe you think the same. Maybe you think really different. You think that um, they could have met they could have met in a pizzeria, in a Starbucks, in, in a library, or they should be at, the, at a, his, his office. Well, you tell me, how would it be in your job, in your company? 
if it were the same situation. Someone from another branch is coming to help in your project. How would you greet the person? How would you treat the person? Would you start with something more like like personal or would you go straight to business let's see and it's going to be a wonderful uh, wonderful conversation because we are going to reflect on this which to com which communication style do you prefer when meeting people for the first time and why? Relationship focused or work focused? Deu para ver que eu moro embaixo da rota dos aviões que decolam de Congonhas, né? Aqui em São Paulo. Eu moro na Vila Mariana, já viu. É isso aí. Todo dia, o dia todo. But you see, another thing came to my mind. If the person is too, too shy, maybe the person would try to focus or to have the uh, work focused communication style. Some others would think, oh, if I am work focused, nothing is going to work. So let me try, even if I am a bit shy, let me try a relationship focused approach and uh, communication style to have something a, a way to communicate with the person you tell me how you think and then what is one advantage and one possible disadvantage of your own personal style ah that's really personal right look we are here to grow to grow as people and to grow as professionals. So I know that I have some trouble, some problems, some disadvantages in my style. And I'm going to tell you, I tend to say some jokes when I'm nervous. I tend to laugh when I'm nervous. And sometimes the situation is not funny and I'm there laughing. <laughs> So you see, I could lose some points in a relationship when, with someone that is serious in the first moment. This is me. I have to try to balance my words, to, to like control myself in order not to start saying jokes, telling jokes. But you tell me, what about you? Are you the same as me? As I am? No? Yes? All right. I'd really like to learn more about you. But after we had all this discussion about Matt and Stephanie's first meeting, we are going to study in depth some options about greetings, introductions, and goodbyes. We have some sentences here. We have some others here connected to these three topics. Meeting and greeting, introducing people, saying goodbyes. They are functional language. language. What is functional language? You say something with an objective. There's a function for that sentence. For example, how's it going? How's it going? Is how's it going? Is a, a way to greet someone, right? And then you say that to be polite and so on. This is the function of that sentence. We have here some others like, did you have a good trip? How was your trip? Can I get you a coffee? Can I get you some water? Can you get you a tea? These are very nice uh, starters for a meeting, right? I think that if I arrive in a place and they offer me some black tea with milk, I would be really happy. But we have these other eight sentences. Which ones from here are also 
sentences that you would mention when meeting and greeting people. Well, let's read the other two here. Introducing people. Let's go and say hello to the team. I'd like to introduce you to my team. Have you met Miran before? She works for, she runs the human resources department. She works with computers. She works for my boss. <laughs> well, uh, this is introducing people. Saying goodbye. Excuse me, I take this call. You are saying goodbye from the conversation at that moment, right? And off, obviously after the call, you're going back and continue the conversation. Well, let's take a look at these eight sentences. We have three here, three here, and two here to complete, right? Okay, so we need to leave there. Leave it there. In what circum circumstances would you say that? Look, we need to leave it there. This suggests a pause, right? You're not pausing here, you're not pausing here, you're pausing here. So you say goodbye like in the end of the meeting because you were pressured by time. You had to stop there. There were these things to talk about and you could talk this so you leave it there. And then you discuss about these things at the next meeting by email, by messages, by a phone call, a video call, the, 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 the next opportunity, right? Look at this one. Good to finally meet you in person. Is this easy, right? Meeting you in person is meeting and greeting. Do you know the design guys? Do you know Jonas from the design department this is this is introducing people you're introducing the design guys to the visitor guys this is stephanie hey people from my team this is stephanie i'm also introducing someone right sorry to be in a rush like this sorry to rush off so soon like Stephanie. Stephanie has two hours. She traveled from Germany to England to have only two hours of conversation and then go back to Germany. She really has to pick the children up at school probably, right? Because look, if you go to London, would you be able to spend only two hours in the city? Uh, wouldn't you like to go and visit Oxford Street to make some shopping? <laughs> to do some shopping, sorry. And, okay, so this is saying goodbye. Uh, nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. It's greeting. It's, it's a greeting, right? Thank you for coming and have a safe trip. And have a good weekend. You are saying goodbye if you say that. And eight, so first time in London. This is obviously when you first meet someone, right? Because you wouldn't say goodbye like this. No, well, this was the exercise. Then we have exercise eight. And exercise eight has these sentences here. This is actually a conversation between Suzanne Jones and her visitor. She works in a company, there's a visitor, and they're going, she receives that person. Match what Suzanne says, these sentences, with the responses from the visitor. And we have these sentences. You should pause the video now and try to figure out how the dialogue is, right? I give you some seconds and then you do it and then you pause. When you 
work on the sentences, I sh would suggest you to pay attention to pronunciation and intonation. And then we are going to do this dialogue at the lesson, right? Let me read before you pause and do the exercise. Let us read. You could repeat the sentence. Hello, I'm Susan Jones, Head of Planning. How's it going? Everything's fine. Good trip? It's always the same. Can I get you anything to drink? Let's go and meet the rest of the team. And then you're going to say, eh, mas a gente não oferece alguma coisa com something. É verdade. Mas talvez, você lembra da explicação no inglês geral? Quando você estudou inglês geral, você oferece, can I get you something to drink? Porque você quer que a pessoa aceita, porque ela é uma visita e você quer tratar bem. Mas aqui é ambiente de trabalho. Então, anything, talvez porque você não quer que a pessoa aceite para vocês poderem trabalhar logo. <risos> Maybe, I don't know. Se bem que aqui não é você que está pagando, então devia oferecer, né? Com something. <laughs> Sorry for that. Ok, but these are the answers from the visitor. The visitor's answers. No, thanks, I'm fine. Hi, Susan. Nice to finally meet you in person. Great, can't wait. Not bad, not bad. How about you? A bit of a delay on the underground today. So if the person took the underground, the person probably lives in the same city. Probably, but I don't know. Let's see. Now you should pause and try to do the exercise. Have you done? Have you tried? Let's go and see the dialogue. Look. Hello, I'm Susan Jones, Head of Planning. Hi, Suzanne. Nice to, to finally meet you in person. How's it going? Not bad, not bad. How about you? Everything is fine. Good trip. A bit of a delay on the ground today. It's always the same. Can I get you anything to drink? No, thanks, I'm fine. Let's go and meet the rest of the team. Great, can't wait. <laughs> much better. It's much more polite to say no, thanks, I'm fine than to say, can I get you anything to drink? Great, can't wait. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go and meet the rest of the team. No, thanks, I'm fine. <laughs> Please, no. You see, they offer something to drink and you say no. And meet the rest of the team. Yes, can't wait. Right? <laughs> In part B, what do we have to do? We, we are going to use phrases from 7 and 8 to write our own dialogue between a host and a business visitor. I suggest that here, the dialogue is about your work environment. Do you work at university? How would it be to receive a visitor uh, in a business context at the university? Do you work in a bank? How would it be to talk about your area in the bank to a visitor, not a client? but to a business partner, someone who's going to install a system in a computer or your boss or a representative from the headquarters, something like this. It is a wonderful exercise because you put yourself in, in the role of someone who greets, receives, a guest, a visitor, to work in your area. That's really nice. 
And then we are going to work with other pairs we, if we have more people in the class. And we should introduce your visitor to the other pair. And visitors should respond. One person should say goodbye to the group, giving a reason why the person has to go. Really, really nice exercise. Really nice. For example, reasons for saying goodbye could be, I'm sorry, but I have to take this phone call. Another option is, have an, you have an appointment or a meeting, or you must talk to another person. You see, these are some, some options. But if it is between two pairs, look, you have prepared how to receive this visitor but these people also have prepared to receive a visitor say so you should be visitors again to the other group okay so working with four people can be really interesting really really interesting and then we have well let me give you an example of a dialogue guys this is Suzanne Jones Hi, Suzanne. Nice to see you again. Do you know Suzanne? Yes, we met in Paris last year. Hello, Tom. How's it going? Very well, thanks. Excuse me, I must go to a meeting. Oh, have a good meeting. You see? Very nice, this kind of exercise, because we have to create, but using all these structures and vocabulary, in the context of our own company. Really nice, really nice exercise. Well, we have this extra activity for this lesson. Shall we take a look at the activity? If I can open the activity. Ah, it opened. <laughs> Uh-oh, we have something wrong in each of these sentences correct the wrong words in each phrase oh how's it doing no how's it going oh how can i correct how's it going thanks thank you for going today ah uh, going <laughs> you would like to say that to uh, to someone you don't like, right? But here you are receiving a visitor. So you say, thank you for coming today. Do you have a good travel? Did you have a good travel? Well, travel is a verb, right? So if you have a good, you have a good something, a good trip. Right? Uh, journey, trip. Good to finally know you in person. Uh, no, is conhecer. Yes, but not here, right? Good to finally meet you in person. Have you known Stephanie before? Uh, no. Again, look, it isn't no. Known. It's meet, met. Have you met? Stephanie before or oh, here and take a good trip home again no have a good trip home let's go to have lunch oh lots of my students would say just this way let's go and have lunch Let's go to have lunch. No, let's go and have lunch. Lovely to see you more. Uh, mm, no, lovely to see you again. Lovely to see you again. Sorry for leave you leave so soon. No, sorry to leave you so soon. Sorry for leaving you so soon. Maybe it would be less terrible. Sorry to leave you so soon. Or you use ing. 
two you use the infinity usually it's this way okay Alistair she's a Stephanie uh, okay she's a woman all right but you don't say on the phone hello I'm Shinky here no you say it's Shinky here and here you say Alistair this is Stephanie okay Oops, I don't understand why it's like that. And you see, I can't drag. <laughs> it's very hard to deal with this, I assure you. Oh, mine, sorry to leave you so soon. Alistair, this is definitely. Oh, I, I think it's a good exercise. And then, see pronunciation bank intonation and politeness so it's good practice and let's take a look at this what do we have to do uh, imagine that we have a, we listen to a sentence what do you do exactly do you think that i spoke that sentence showing interest in you what do you do exactly no I don't think it was an interested intonation we vary intonation right uh, but in order to sound polite and interested we use a variety intonation when we ask questions let's show these when we ask questions as it's a wh question what do you do exactly i use a rising interested intonation if we use the if we use an incorrect intonation it could result in misunderstandings or listenings even feeling offended you don't want to offend anybody no so obviously maybe uh, people have said that i put a lot of variation modulation when i speak but there's usually some variation in our intonation when we speak we don't say what do you do exactly you're not a robot, right? So let's see a little more about that. What do we have to do? Listen to two versions of three questions. Which version sounds polite and interested? First or the second? So the point is, we are going to listen to two different versions of the same sentence. Which one? sounds polite because it has some variation some modulation here they they speak with like showing interest pay attention and tell me unit one pronunciation recording two one a are you very busy at the moment one b are you very busy at the moment? Which one sounds a little stressed? Look, the first one is much more polite, right? Oh, please, you try to answer for yourself first and then you listen, <clears throat> right? You can pause the video and then watch and they listen and try to think about and then you see the answer okay two where are you based 2a where are you based 2b where are you based <sighs> again the, the second person 
is more stressed, right, or uninterested. And the first one is more interested. The third sentence is, do you travel a lot for work? 3A. Do you travel a lot for work? 3B. Do you travel a lot for work? You see the difference. The second person showed so much more interest. And look, sometimes we don't know the correct words to make a polite sentence. You know that story of going to the bakery and ordering some bread. Brazilians say, Quero dois pães, and it's okay in Brazil. In the United States or England, for example, you, if you say, I want to rose, it's not really polite, right? You should say, I'd like to rose, please. This is more polite, right? But look, if you speak, I'd like to rose, please, do you really think it sounded polite? I don't think so. But if you say, uh, I want two rolls, please, it's not the correct sentence, but it's the correct intonation. Maybe the person is going to say, oh, he's a tourist. He doesn't know English very well, but he's a polite person. You see? So, remember, sound polite. This is very important in an international context. It's very important in a business context, really. Now, we are going to listen only to the polite and interested versions again. Click on the word with the main stress in each. Well, the point is to find the word that is stressed. What's that? Palavra tônica, palavra falada de forma mais forte. We give stress to that word to show that we are talking about that, right? This helps a lot in English to identify the, the topic we are giving importance. For example, are you very busy at the moment? Are you very busy at the moment? You see, busy, uh, I'm worried about how busy you are, but at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm worried about now, because maybe you could come and help me with something. The, the difference. So, pay attention. Click on the word. I'm going to click. If you have access to the audio, you listen to it. Otherwise, I'm going to play and pause and you try to find the word. Unit 1. Pronunciation. Recording 3. 1. Are you very busy at the moment? Are you very busy at the moment? What was the word or expression? I'm going to answer this one. Two. Where are you based? Two. Where are you based? Ah. Where are you based? Look, the verb isn't important here. Where are you based? I'm asking you, so it's obviously that is about you. And you see, and the topic is based. Where do you live? Where do you work? And so on. Three. Do you travel a lot for work? Here? Do you travel a lot for work? Right? Yes? Mm -hmm. And now take turns to ask one of the questions sounding either polite and interested or impolite and uninterested. <laughs> and you, the other one should understand if you're doing it the one way or the other way. Like, 
Are you very busy at the moment? No, uninterested, impolite. Are you very busy at the moment? I'm showing interest. That's it. That's what we are probably going to do in the live lesson. Are you enjoying the lesson? Oops, no, don't open, please. Because now we have the best part. We have a coffee break. Yes, some coffee or tea, some snacks and maybe some water or juice and they're happy talking meeting friends really good well work in pairs choose an industry from the list and invent your roles think about your job titles company name and geographical location what what are we doing here well, this is a very interesting exercise. It's a task-based exercise in which we have to imagine a situation. We have some, some uh, industries here, like architecture, fashion, movies, music, toy makers, and video games. What would you like to work with? Do you have your area represented here? Otherwise, you have to think about another one you could be successful with. So, can you think about that? You're watching the video, so try to bring to the live lesson your area, your company, your job title, your company name, and your geographical location. This is really nice, really nice. For example, I work in architecture. Uh, my company is DPE Architectures. Architects. I'm, uh, I'm the head of planning. Uh, you see how important I am? The head of planning. And um, I work at, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And you, what's your area? What do you work with? What is your role? And where are you based? And then we go to this large public event. It's a training event, it's a course, it's a convention, and it's, we are enjoying it very much. Introduce yourself and your colleague to other people, or introduce yourself to me if you are my private student. And then, if you find someone who could be a useful contact, make a note of their name and his job, his company, you see? Uh, if not, you say goodbye politely and move on. And obviously, if you, make, you think that this contact is possible, uh, possibly productive, you should be able to, to uh, say goodbye in the end of the conversation. At the end, tell the class how many useful contacts you made. Why did you think these people could be useful? Like, I work as an architect. Can I be positive for, a move, for the movie industry, for the fashion industry? Maybe you were making or opening a shop, and then you would need an architect. You have me. You see, this is what we are going to do, because we are going to introduce ourselves, we are going to ask about the other one's job, area, company, and so on, and we are going to say what we do, where we live, and so on. We should also make some small talk, like we saw in the first lesson. First, or oh, small talk at first meetings. After that, we are going to say goodbye. Um, what do we do later? We, we are going to talk about that. After we finish this task, this conversation, we should talk how easy it was uh, if it, we had any trouble, 
maybe the teacher is going to correct some minor mistakes and we learn a lot with these exercises because we really think how things really work and this is very positive for our lesson and then we should go a little deeper and say which phrases we could use from exercise 7 and what we found difficult. Well, we can do this at home prior the lesson and we could think about this, how we are going to greet someone, talk about ourselves and ask questions to the other person. This is a wonderful practice. And then this is the end of the lesson. Did you like it? I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it very much. This lesson that is 1.3 Communication Skills Managing First Meeting. See you in the live lesson. Bye bye.